Plymouth is a coastal city tucked away in the southwest of England, which is usually forgotten about. Plymouth didn't gain city status until 1928, way after the First World War, but the history of Plymouth goes back thousands of years, and in those years it's been home to some great people and not so great people. Our first story begins in 1642. The town of Plymouth is fed up with King Charles I and his antics, as he constantly used the coastal city to house his ill-fed, ill-equipped and overpopulated naval men. These men would go fight in useless wars, only to return with dead soldiers and plagues that would run through the city. It was up to the people to clean up these mess that the king would leave constantly. Plymouth sided with the Parliament, unsurprisingly, and signed a solemn oath in the Guildhall saying they would fight to the last man in defence of the city. Many ports around the country at that time fell to the Royalist hands, but Plymouth remained the only port throughout the war for the Parliament. Plymouth prior to the war was already a fortified city, having fortifications built during the reign of King Henry VIII. By 1644, the city was still holding strong, even after many failed attempts by the Royalists to retake the city. Sir Richard Grenville replaced Prince Maurice to watch over the siege. Prior to the siege, Richard was in Ireland, brutally hunting and attacking Irish Catholics. Skip 40 years later, Plymouth was still holding strong under the command of Colonel William Rutheran. Plymouth is notorious for its terrible rain, especially in the winter months, and it began to rain. And it didn't just rain, it poured. For two days straight, the water filled the ditches and made the earthworks into mud. Richard Grenville was an incredibly stubborn man and wouldn't let just a little bit of rain stop his assault. So he sent in waves of men into the earthworks only for them to drown. The loss of life was so dire that his own officers had to take control and tell him to stop his madness. Just because the royalists couldn't get into the city didn't mean they couldn't fire into the city using their cannons. After all this, Plymouth went on the offensive and attacked the cannons themselves killing over 60 people at Morden before turning the cannons on the Royalists themselves. Today there stands a memorial in Freedom Fields Park. This memorial is dedicated to the brave people of Plymouth, which withstood the Royalist assault and never surrendered. The year is 1815. Napoleon has been defeated at the infamous Battle of Waterloo and has been taken captive by the British. The Emperor was taken on board the HMS Bellafon, and from there he would go to Plymouth Sound. To the British people, Napoleon seemed as some unimaginable tyrant, a man draped in bones of his enemies, but here in the flesh he was just a mere mortal. Even though the British propaganda machine has been spending years undermining and slandering Napoleon, it turned him into a celebrity actually, and when the people found out that the Napoleon Bonaparte was in Plymouth Sound, thousands flocked to see the Emperor in the flesh. The Emperor loved the attention, and would frequently stroll onto the deck of the HMS Bellafon. Amused by all the onlookers, he would do a couple of poses for them and go back underneath. The year is 1941. World War II is in full swing, and on the night of the 20th of March, groups of German bombers of the 3rd Air Fleet fly from German-occupied France on their way to Plymouth. The Germans are simply ruthless in their bombings, attacking the city centre, and within 24 hours the aerial assault intensified and Plymouth became the worst blitz city of its size in the UK. The Germans were mostly interested in destroying the dockyard, because the dockyard was responsible for producing and fixing ships and submarines for the Royal Navy. On the 2nd of May 1941, Winston Churchill came down to Plymouth to visit the workers. He was greeted with cheers and joy. This truly does show the resilience of the British spirit. The population of Plymouth fell by 100,000 during the war, with most of the people being taken by Lauren to the fringes of Dartmoor. Today we remember all of our fallen people during the war, with multiple memorials and statues, and we will never forget their sacrifice. (laughs) 